Welcome back, everybody, to FTB Regrowth. And uh, today, we are going to... Well, basically, I'm showcasing, firstly, my uh, automated... Uh, I suppose, uh, Living Rock Maker. Uh, I suppose that's about the... Or machine, as you will. And basically, I, I thought... Yeah, I, I've automated the uh, runic altar. Let's automate the uh, making of living rock. So I figured out how to do that. Now, we are going to go through the process of making or setting this up with doing exactly the same thing with the uh, living wood. So have a steady, constant supply of living wood. All right. So first things first. We extend this cable over this way. So that's that. Now I just have to go and get a few things, namely a, a barrel. Okay, definitely know I've got one of those. Fantastic. Now the uh, while we uh, start setting this up, I'll uh, just basically explain how this works. It's basically formation planes and annihilation planes. I hadn't really mucked around with them to start off with, so I decided it was time to figure out what, what they were all about. And uh, to be honest, it's, uh, a little, it's a little finicky. I'll take all those. What the? Okay. <laughs> okay, that was weird. Uh, I'm going to need some cable anchors because I want to separate the two systems out. So, anchor. Might be enough, but I don't think so. I might need four. Two, three. Uh, yep, I'm definitely going to need four. <clears throat> okay. Just one will give me the three. Cool. Right. So that'll keep the those two systems separated. Now, the way annihilation planes work is they'll destroy anything that's in front of them and put them into, or basically store them in the uh, applied energistic system digitally. However, that doesn't quite work when we only want one particular thing. Now, what I was able to discover with a little bit of research is that annihilation planes will only destroy things. Uh, is that uh, that's a storage bus? So, yep, I've got one of those. Fantastic. They will only oh fiddlesticks. They will only basically pull up what it can put into a uh, into storage. So if you only want to take or have the annihilation plane basically filter out for one particular block, you give it a basically a sub, a sub network of its own and uh, basically give it a barrel of that's all that is going to go into that barrel. So it actually works really, really well. Uh, what was I going to need? That's right, living wood. I need a sample of living wood to go in here. Like such. We'll lock that up. <coughs> right. So, let's see now. If I'm copying this whole system uh, verbatim, I need to basically go down here. Uh, quartz fiber. I'm going to need to make some more of those. Now, I'm separating out these, uh, like, sub networks. They're not really... <coughs> they're almost networks of their own. With with power. Alright. So, I'm also getting another network to basically supply the formation planes with the items that are going to be placed down. So, um... Quartz. Oh, I, did, I do have one of those. Fantastic. So that's going to go there. And that's going to require power. 
Uh, I think that's the way. Yep. Like such. So that's going to go down to the formation planes. So basically the formation planes are going to be around the pure daisy. Now, of course, it's, it is a smaller network and it can only really support eight channels. So that's fine. The only, only this drawback to that is you, I can't totally surround a daisy with wood. That's all right. I'm happy with uh, having only seven around these things. All right, now also on the top of the this Java barrel, I have another storage bus. Okay, so that's going to register soon. Yep, lovely. And then, hmm, how am I going to do this? Now that's pointing down towards there. I need a level emitter. Now, how level emitters work is they will emit a redstone signal. Do I have one? No. Uh, based on how much you've got of a particular item in an inventory. Uh, da -da -da. So, it's that. Very, very simple to make, and I don't have a redstone torch. Do I have a recipe? Oh yeah, I do have a recipe for one. Thankfully. Start. Boom. Done. Lovely. Okay. So that is going to go there, pointing this way out. And that is going to register on living wood. It's going to emit a signal when levels are below a specific number. And I'm going to say the specific number is one stack. Okay. So that's also reading the um, this Jabber Barrel here. That is still up. It is a part of the storage system as a whole. So if I pull out that stack there, I've got now less than a stack of living wood in the system. That light goes on. And then it goes off once it's got more than a stack. The reason why I'm doing this is for the formation plane, which is going to be supplied into a chest. The items that are going to be formed is going to have its own little system and the only thing that's going to base is going to be forming is uh, or basically yeah basically forming the the logs that are going to get turned into the living wood right so i'm going to need um no birch birch wood hmm i always thought it was birch logs Never mind. Okay, so that is going to get put there. Now, that has got an import bus. Now, import bus basically pulls items out of inventories and puts them into the system. So, import bus, got to craft one of those. Do, do, do. Waiting, waiting, waiting. It's coming eventually. There we go. So, import bus goes down there. Now with that, we can actually specify what the import bus is going to be pulling in. And it's going to be pulling in the birch wood. Now, I don't want a whole chest full of birch. I mean, I could, but I'm not going to. 
So I'm just going to take a stack of, say, andesite. Doesn't really matter. And we are going to block out everything except the first slot in that chest. Like such. So I'll only have one stack of wood going into the system. Like such. And then I want a export bus. Like that. And I also need a card, redstone card. One of these. <sighs> Back to crafting the redstone torch. Like that. Okay, so... Whoops. Didn't quite do what I needed it to do. I need this card. So, can I, yep, I can jump up there, fantastic. So it's gonna export with a level emitter and it's going to activate with signal. So when it gets a signal, it's gonna start putting wood into this, into this, uh, chest here and that's going to go into the planes themselves okay now it's just the uh, matter of setting up the planes okay so we'll just use these blocks that I've just dug out So I can place the annihilation planes underneath. So I've got three of those already, so I just need another five. Do 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 do. Wait for the things to craft. Okay, that's three, waiting on one more, there we go, five, fantastic, one, two, three, four, and five, actually I didn't need five, I, I didn't, I only needed seven, I completely forgot, right, so plane, 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 and I'm also going to need some more cable anchors. Uh, let's just hop back up here. <laughs> I'm definitely going to need, say, another five. And I guess. I'm also going to need some more cable too. I think at the very least 16. So that shouldn't take too long to craft up. There we go. So we'll hop back down here. Squeeze in an anchor there, anchor there, and anchor there. Fantastic. And then hook up these wires here okay fantastic so that's currently saying it's got six of eight channels I just need to uh, basically put the other bl uh, the other planes down so what I can do is we'll just take these off here now as you can see the the, the annihilation planes they have power but they're not sucking up the blocks <coughs> that I have placed 
well, basically you place the planes on. If I didn't have, if if I had like an open inventory system that the annihilation planes could suck into, they would have taken those blocks straight away. But since the, whoops, turn that off. Since my very very small system is only accepting living wood, that's all the annihilation planes will ever 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 try and take. So plane and plane. There we go. All eight channels are now taken for these. Uh, we'll cover that part and cover them up afterwards. Actually, I'm definitely going to need those blocks back down again because I need to actually put down the formation planes. Do 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 do. Right. So I only need seven formation planes, not eight. So formation. I need seven formation cores. It's good that I've got everything still. Excellent. Actually, I didn't need those. I only needed another four. So I need another four, another four formation planes. Right, so three, four, five, six, seven, there we go, that's all I needed, didn't need any more than that. So these will be forming from living wood, because that's all this import bus is actually going to spit out, and into the system with the formation planes. So it goes there, goes there, goes there, goes there. Uh, I'm going to have to shift click those. Now this um, has basically... Aha! Now I have made a boo-boo. The boo-boo being is that... Let me see, get my wrench out. Take that off, everything's good. I need to put a cable anchor there because this top loop, this top little network has to be separate from everything else. So it goes there, goes there, goes there. Fantastic. So we'll just get rid of all of these. Right. Uh, oh, good. I've got some facades with me. Fantastic. I still love using these particular facades because it's what I've been using as a standard to uh, basically let me let me let me know that there is cables below that particular facade if you make them all the same it's kind of hard to see okay so that's all connected that's beautiful looks good okay I still need those facades because I want to uh, patch up the uh, the hole underneath so I'm not looking at just cables uh, am I going to be able to see there? The answer that doesn't look like it. So, let me see. Okay, that's not too bad. Can I, can I, can I? Beautiful. Love it. Facades are the best. Cover, cover. Beautiful. Doesn't look like I've ever been there. So that is the setup. So if I come along to here and just basically, 
Oh, not that. Pinch all of that. That light goes on. The export bus is... I don't know why that had decided to disappear. Or I hadn't actually uh, placed the uh, birch wood in there. It's activated on the signal. Signal's going up. The wood's go wood is basically down. Uh, I don't think the actual a second pure daisy will actually speed up the process any, but it's just tidy and out of the way now. So just waiting, waiting, waiting. Do 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 do. This is basically just pro proving that, pro well, basically making sure this actually works. I mean, I can always up that, uh, yeah, what do you reckon? Maybe a couple of stacks? So that'll be a hundred and twenty-eight. Now the the birch wood in the, with the conversion to living wood is doing that little bit of a funky lag type thing, so uh, it is doing something strange there. But we have definitely made another seven, and there we have it: a completely completely automated system in making living rock and living wood. Now, extending the uh, theorems from uh, yesterday's episode, I've basically made an open crate with an ME interface on top of that, just over this mana pool, brought it into the range of this hopper hock, which is basically dragging everything that's not a living piece of living rock into the system, and uh, place the recipes for mana diamonds, Mana steel ingots, floral fertilizer, and mana pearls. Which they're going to dump into this uh, mana pool down here and basically convert it and be, be put back into the system. So that's those particular items uh, automated as well. So there we have it. The uh, reason why uh, the stones are going... Basically, I'm overproducing on the uh, living rock. Is with the dispenser. I don't know if there is a way that you can only dispense just the top item. If you might know, do go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section. But the other thing I could possibly uh, automate is. Uh, basically flower production I don't really have a need to make flowers um, anytime soon if at all but uh, the making of lenses is definitely something I need to do so the runes need to, ha need to happen and to keep the uh, rune production up I need to have a good steady supply of living rock so that was the main reason for that and having a supply well basically a continual supply of living wood that is being produced without my intervention it was definitely a good thing to have so uh, all right a bit of a shorter one this this I wouldn't say this week today uh, apart from yesterday's episode that was a bit uh, longer than I anticipated but I really really wanted to figure out how to uh, do the automated um, runic altar. It is slightly different than the one I did in season one of my uh, regrowth series, but it seems to be a lot more compact and it does look a lot better. Much, much better than, the, than that one. Alright folks, well if you've enjoyed the video and enjoyed the series thus far, do go ahead and click that like button for me and of course if you wouldn't mind, share the video around to Facebook, Twitter or any other place that uh, you deem, deem fit. Alright folks, well I've been Ray Tack, I shall see you next time.